Hey everyone, I'm Pete, and today I am sharing a project of mine that I worked on with my toddler, actually. He is just turning four years old, and he really wanted a jukebox. Um, we've been reading a lot of books together, so we recorded some of those books, um, and we put them into a little jukebox here for him. It's actually all quick based, so I call it the quick jukebox. Um, in this video, we're gonna talk about the background of the project a bit, and then dive into some of the electronics inside it. And then I actually decided to recreate one of the solutions uh, instead of using RFID, doing something a little more crafty. Um, so we're gonna talk about that at the end. So basically, this is a jukebox from a kid. And what I wanted to do was have RFID tags that were linked to MP3s that would play. So basically, he's got a pile of these that we put stickers on to make them custom so he could remember. And he just puts it over the SparkFun flame. Bing! Here's the little bing track that indicates, hey, I heard that RFID tag. And then he's got a couple nice huge arcade buttons here. So um, yeah, that's a track we actually recorded together um, in our basement, so that was pretty fun. Um, and then yeah, this one will trigger Paddington and the Magic Trick. And these have some like pretty enormously large, um, I think it's 32-bit IDs. And so originally I had to learn all of those, and then I just put like a number on the back of them so that it was a little more easy to maintain. And so we actually, uh, we just named them one, two, three, four, and then assigned tracks to those. Um, so let's turn this thing around and take a look at some of the electronics inside. So actually you can see it's laid out here pretty nicely um, that there aren't too many cables to hook up. We've got our Redboard Quick here, kind of central to the, the faceplate. And then I've got my Quick MP3 player here, and that's actually just wired with this single Quick cable. That provides power for um, all the boards in the system, and then communication to the MP3 player. Uh, the MP3 player is wired to this little um, hamburger speaker on the other side right there. And then the quick cable here passes through the MP3 and makes its way to the RFID, RFID reader in the corner there. Um, and that is also providing power and communication to that board. So super easy hookup. Um, this cable here is something I'll talk about a little later. So this is actually not necessary for the most simple basic setup that you could do for this. Um, we've also got two buttons here, um, and these are just wired to I.O. on the redboard there. So I was actually thinking you could pull this off without soldering at all. If you used our new little gator to um, pigtail, I think it's called, because you could actually clip to the ends of these buttons with the alligator and then just go straight into the redboard there. I actually had these left over from another project, so I already had wires soldered to them. And uh, so that's why they're soldered here. But if I were to do this again or, or build another for a friend, I'd probably um, go for the gator connector. This also has an extra button here from a previous project. You can see I got another hole there too. But I just repurposed um, this whole faceplate. You know, actually, whenever when I was walking around with this this morning, um, everybody, the first thing they asked me is like, did you bend that plexiglass? <laughs> because like this enclosure is pretty cool looking. I actually built this about three years ago for an audio project. It was a little demo booth thing. So to bend the plexi, it's actually pretty easy. There's a heating element you can buy. It's just a long strip and you lay the, it's not plexi, right? It's acrylic. So you lay the acrylic on top of that and then it starts to heat up. And as soon as you start hearing crackle, like a little bit of bubbles, then you've gone too far. So you want to try to get it just right and it gets a little goopy and then you can bend your angles in it, and then when it hardens, it's got this really nice finish to it. Um, one trick that I did learn that I will pass on is if you use like a compressed air gun right at the crack, um, after you have your bend, it'll cool immediately. So you don't have to hold it there and wait 10 minutes for the uh, acrylic to cool down. So anyways, we bent these angles, and then um, actually, I, I don't know if you can see, but I milled out um, using like a, a bit on a, it wasn't a Dremel, it's like a sander style spinner and you can, you put it in there and then you just follow a line. So I ended up cutting out a piece of the wood right there, a little track for these things to sandwich into the, the bent acrylic. And uh, just a little line of epoxy in there and it's held together for quite a long time. And then the way I did the face plate is um, you can actually take this off with a few screws and then replace what's in the front there. So 
you got a, a pretty good second life here with the jukebox project and who knows what it'll have next. So we talked about what's going on behind the scenes there. Um, actually on the front of the project there's this SparkFun Red box, right? Um, and it seems kind of unnecessary possibly. Well, um, at the end of this project, once I had RFID working, I kind of got that good old fashioned engineer's curse and said, I could probably design this differently in my own way. Um, and I really wanted to do something a bit more crafty so that I could involve Graham and the electronics. He actually helped plug in all the quick connectors, which is pretty rad. So he got to sort of understand how power works and how these things need to be wired up. Um, but in terms of the RFID, that was a little magic for him. And you know, that's cool and it works. But um, I wanted to do something a little different. Um, and so I came up with another solution for um, engaging the track you wanna play. And my first option was actually gonna be a series of light sensors. And so I made a little box and I wired up four little light sensors in it. And then my plan was to have cardboard tags. Um, and then he could slide this into here and it would cover up certain light sensors and give a code to the project so it would play the right track. And this worked pretty well, but it actually required some very precise handling. And um, the cutout of the holes was pretty tricky to line it up just right. And some of my deep, during my debugging, I was noticing that like this code is getting really complicated to try to filter out the light, the ambient light was changing between rooms and stuff. Um, so anyways, my next version after that was a bunch of IR sensors. And these are actually the IR sensors that are found in the Redbot kit for line following. So they do a really good job of sensing white or black. And so then I came up with some cards that actually have things that kind of look like piano keys, right? Um, and this is gonna be my binary number that I can read on this and tell it which track. So then we came up with a couple different ones, right? And this one's gonna read five and this one's gonna read three. So now we can actually cut these out of cardboard together and color in the boxes and he kind of gets a little more understanding of like, oh, this is a unique card and it has a graphic on it and this is a number. And he actually, we go to the library so much and he does all the scanning with the, the books there. So he kind of understood that like, oh, this is a graphic and there's a scanner reading what's going on there. And he gets to learn about binary numbers, you know? So let's give this one a shot too. Seal it up. And we just go ahead and push this in here. Bing, aha, it's working. And so this is track uh, five we have for this. Um, and yeah, so now we can make a bunch of these ones um, just out of cardboard, you know, and have a lot of fun and a little more crafty solution to that. And I ended up keeping the RFID in there um, because we already linked these cards to those tracks. And as the project gets bigger and we put more audiobooks into this and more music he wants to listen to, we can build some more of these and we can get a few more of these too and just build it out. Um, the other fun uh, part of this project I wanted to share was that Graham actually was involved in the coding for this. And so I was showing him how the play button would start the track he wants to listen to and the stop button would stop the track, right? He pretty much understood that. But very quickly, after using it a few nights, we realized we really needed pause for those occasional breaks you need to take from your audiobook. Um, and the original MP3 player I used was our MP3 trigger. So not the quick MP3 trigger, just the MP3 trigger. And that one does not have pause. So it's a little bit of a limitation for that. I, I needed pause on this project. So then I switched to the quick MP3 trigger, which has pause, which is great. Um, and so what we ended up doing was Graham said, I really want stop because that's a useful feature, but I also want pause. So he said, why don't we make the stop button do pause if you hit it twice? And I was like, oh, that's so awesome. You're starting to understand programming and yes, we can change this to do whatever you want. And so instead of adding the third button, we actually went in there and made a pause. So this will start from the beginning of that drum beat. This is a, a track of music we've played, right? And so if I hit stop twice, then it's actually paused right there where the guitar had already come in. And then we're back to where we were. So pause is working pretty good. Pretty stoked on that. And then if I just hit it once, then it, it's done. Yeah, so um, 
that's pretty much the, the project. I wanted to share that progression of how I started with the MP3 player, needed the pause, switched to the quick system, it was super easy, and then decided to redesign it in my own way with some more crafty solutions. Um, and I would recommend checking out the quick system if you have any kind of project similar to this or if you want to build your own jukebox, follow along in the rest of this post. Um, so hit up SparkFun and check out all the quick stuff we got. And I'd recommend the MP3 trigger and the RFID. Nice. Huh, it played again. Alright, worked pretty good.